is enterprise mobile cross-platform development uh, using Xamarin. I'm James Lavery, or over here in Ireland, we'll have to be Lavery again, because I don't want to be Lavery. Um, is it sort of going on here? Yeah. Microsoft. We've been developing software since 1979, based in the UK, and what I'm going to be covering today, if I can get the projector to work, first of all, why you should be looking at cross-platform if you're doing mobile development, how the Xamarin technology which we use to do our cross-platform mobile applications actually works, implications if you're doing cross-platform and you're doing mobile in terms of testing, very mind, we've only got 15 minutes here, so it can be quite a, a quick overview. You're testing on mobile devices. Once you've got your app out there, the implications again on what you should be doing and thinking about in terms of analytics from the application out in the field. And also considerations on deploying your application. We come from a Red Hat, what has some to say about deployment, etc. So we'll see what later on. And also, once you've got your app out in the field, why don't when iOS and Android actually update their operating system? What does that mean for you? So first of all, apps are everywhere these days. I came over here from Southampton, I put my, put my flight on a mobile app, I check the availability on a mobile app, apps are everywhere. So if you want to be, have an app for your business or for your customers, it is, I think it is negligent now to develop an app which is only going to run on one platform and it's got a really, really, really good business case for only targeting one platform. Right now you might think your customers only want to run on iOS. What happens if their business case or the marketplace changes and now it needs to run on Android? What you don't want to have to do is have to rewrite the whole app again in, in, in Java. So you could do it once in Objective-C or Swift to run on iOS and now you have to develop the whole thing again in Android. In order to do that, as a developer and for your customers, you need a development platform, a development environment which enables you to get to the market quickly, to reuse your, your skill sets, which we at Microsoft did, we're a .NET development house, and Xamarin uses C-sharp and .NET, to ensure easy adoption, have an app which actually really looks nice and performs well and delights your users. Once you get your app out in the field, to be able to actually analyse what's going on with it, get crash reports if there are any back from the field, so you can proactively put out updates for it and actually map also user experience in, in their use of the app. And then when the, you get the um, operating system upgrades to Android or iOS, to be able to make use of those as soon as you can, rather than having to wait for the tool set to catch up and make those um, updates available to you as a so, looking at Xamarin, the Xamarin platform, what does it do? One option for building a mobile app which runs across all three platforms is to write it three times. So you, write, you use Xcode to write it in Objective-C to run on Apple. You use Visual Studio and C Sharp to run this on Windows, and you use Eclipse and Java to run on Android. That's one option. Problem is, as I said right at the beginning, if you need to make an up, first of all, you have to write it three times. You also, then if you have to make any changes, you have to ripple those changes across all three platforms. That's a very expensive way of doing something if you've got it running on more than one platform. With Xamarin, what we have is one code base using .NET and C Sharp, which runs across all three platforms. So now you can use the same team to, to do certainly to do your middle layer and, it, and also your UI if necessary, because they have got the, the stop that skills across the platform, across all the platforms. One problem with or implication with cross cross platform apps is, is performance. With Xamarin, you actually get native performance. How this is achieved 
is on iOS, Apple don't let you have run times or um, pre-compilers, or sorry, not pre-compilers, um, wrappers, etc. So what they do with uh, on iOS is it actually gets compiled ahead of time into a full native binary um, application for iOS. On Android, we're slightly luckier in that you can actually have the runtime, the Xamarin runtime, sitting on your device, and it will actually do just in time comp compilation at runtime and to supply to run the app. Strangely, that's a, that is still as fast as a native app, and it actually is, can be faster. That must be how it can be actually faster than a native app running. So you get native performance and native look and feel using the, these two technologies. And of the solutions, as far as I'm aware, Xamarin is the only one which gives us this, this, this ability with a cross-platform tool. You actually use your standard native controls on, for your platform. So if you're running a Windows mobile app, you have the Windows mobile controls. If you've got a, an iOS app, the user sees iOS controls. It looks like an iOS and iPhone app. And similarly on Android, it looks like an Android app, which is important to your users. If you don't want an app which looks a little bit different, to the user. If they're sitting there with their iPhone, they want to look like an iPhone there. We have access to every single API as a programmer that you would have if you're doing a native. That's one thing Xamarin is very proud of. So with iOS, on a new release, they will have an app Xamarin release within 24 hours implementing those new APIs. And that means accelerometer, um, camera, any sensor you've got on the phone, you've got access to um, using Xamarin. And finally, with, with performance, if there are any platform-specific accelerators, accelerations, etc., et um, um, then that's available to us as well. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Excellent. So, how does Xamarin actually achieve this? There are two different models for using Xamarin. So first of all, using Xamarin iOS, Xamarin Android, and Xamarin, or native Xamarin, effectively, Xamarin C Sharp, you write all your shared application logic, so your business layer, your service communication layer, etc., which can be shared across all your platforms. That's just ordinary .NET code, which will run on all three platforms. The challenge is to then have your user interface. As I keep saying, it's important the user interface looks like a good native app. So what you, what you do with Xamarin iOS is you then write your user interface using C Sharp and .NET by hooking directly into the iOS APIs to give yourself a native application user interface. The same with, so that's using view controllers, view models, etc. On Android, it's similar. It's still using .NET and C Sharp, but here we're doing with intents, activities, all the stuff which is to do with a native Android. And with Windows and Windows Mobile, it's already it's part of the framework anyway. So that is great for um, an app where you really want to have a really, really rich user interface. You want, you want to have perhaps lots of animations, lots of gestures, and it, it's more for B2C, business and consumer uh, applications, where you want to really swish with the user interface. Because you really want to be able to concentrate and hone these two user interfaces or three user interfaces. But keep going on about it, the important thing is you can still share your logic or your business logic, business logic across all three platforms. Xamarin Forms, which came out about two years ago, and it's, it's now getting out and becoming really production ready, allows you to define the user interface once as well. And it abstracts that and gives you a good fit to the controls on each device. It's better suited for proof concepts business applications, internal applications, where it's really more to do with um, data entry, data record, data capture. If you want to have a really, really swish, not fancy user interface, then uh, Xamarin, Android, Xamarin, iOS is a better option rather than Xamarin Forms. Although I'm, just, I'm developing a proof of concept for a customer at the moment, I'm talking to a Bluetooth low energy device displaying data capture off it using Xamarin Forms, and it looks pretty good actually.
I'll just skip that slide because we're running out of time. Let's just go through the detail of what I've just described for the two platforms. As I say, we've only got 15 minutes here, so this is a so we can stop to. You can, uh, you don't have to stop. That's right. We had some inconvenience. That's fine. So it That's okay. okay. So, we covered in brief how Xamarin works between using Xamarin Forms or Xamarin iOS or Android to get us two ways of using the cross platform. You've got your application developed, you're coming to the point where you're testing it, you want to test these on devices. It's an interesting statistic. In the US, this is about a year ago now. If you wanted to get 75% coverage in the consumer base for your devices, you would have to test it on 134 different devices. That includes Android, not just uh, iOS. That's quite a problem. You're going to go out and buy 134 different devices and test them all? With Xamarin, they've got their product, which is Xamarin Test Cloud which is basically a warehouse filled with physical devices in Denmark. You can script your user interface testing, send those tests up into the cloud, and run those tests on physical devices. What that gives you, A, is you can tell whether it even runs on the device, and we found this, that we have an application that runs perfectly on the devices we've tested on. We've put it on a customer device, and especially on Android, there's a subtle difference in how they've implemented Android, a subtle timing difference in the way they use it, display and a crash. With Test Cloud, you can send it up, it will run all those tests in parallel on all the devices, and then you'll get a screenshot of every single screen, and you can see not only whether it works, but also how it lays out. And especially on Android, you'll find it works perfectly on your current device. On a different device, you'll find the button slightly off the bottom. You'll get, you can get screenshots from all of the devices, and you can check the layout, and that's all automated. The latest release also gives, of test plan also gives you um, video recording of all the animations as well. And this is a, we use this for user interface smoke testing, mainly, and you just have a, a test which just runs through all the scripts and makes sure the application doesn't crash. So for regression testing, it's really useful, so you can make sure it still works. Or one of our customers has a device which we don't have, but it's in test cloud. So we'll just run it up in there and see if it can make sure it works. It is a paid service, you pay per testing minute, but we find it really, really useful. Once you've gone through the process, released your app, got it out in the wild, you want to find out, you want to be notified of any problems out in the field. And also, one of the mantras these days in terms of mobile application development and deployment is analytics. You really want to know how your customers and your users are using the app. Are they even visiting that wonderful screen which you thought everyone's going to really like? With Xamarin Insights, you can track usage in the app and report that back to a central dashboard. And so you can check usage, you can check, you can actually check location as well, where your customer base is geographically. And more importantly, as a software developer, you also get crash reports back. Obviously, none of us want crash reports. But when they happen, you want to get a stack trace. You want to know where it happened. And you'll get a full stack trace back of where someone's had a crash. You also get demographics of how many specific crashes have happened um, yeah. and the user base. You can actually even email the customer and say, Dear Joe, we noticed you had a problem. We've logged it. We'll get that fixed in the next release. Xamarin Insights, as part of um, Xamarin's acquisition by Microsoft, is being resolved into um, their infrastructure company, and this is still called Hockey App, um, which is also used, by the way, for distributing your app out to your beta testers. And so I think that's going to improve quite a bit as well in terms of getting your analytics back. Done? So, at Microsec, using Xamarin, what we end up having is a really good, complete solution in terms of being able to design, develop the application, integrate it with any third-party tools, test it using Test Cloud, and once we've got it deployed, use Xamarin Insights to actually get analytics back. A couple of other thoughts about deployment. How are you going to deploy your app? 
We all know for Apple, we're putting it on the App Store. For Google, it'll be the Google Play Store, and Windows, it's the Windows Phone Store. That's great, but it depends on what, what your customer base is. A lot of the applications we develop are for our own and for our, for our customers and companies, corporates to use. And so we end up having to put the app on the App Store for Joe Public to download, uh, even though it's actually very specifically designed just for our customer. It's not ideal. So the, the option is the, the other options are to actually use a third party app store and customers, uh, companies like um, Mobileye, Appearium, Airwatch. We can't. Do you, do you provide an app store through? Can we do a Red Hat one. Yeah. So Red Hat with um, uh, Red Hat Mobile, they have their own app store, and these will allow you if you want to distribute it just to your specific set of your own users, your own customers, to actually have your own branded app store, which will only be accessible to your customers. The slight catch with that with Apple, and there's always a catch with Apple, is in order to distribute to specific users, you have to have an enterprise distribution every um, which is always nearly, but again, there's something to keep and bear in mind when you're distributing. As I say, the, the default position is use, is use the app stores, but if you want to distribute to a specific set of users, then you have to start looking at third party stores. More, more with Apple, with Google Play, it's slightly different. What happens when Apple update their, uh, their operating system? We have been burned by this several times. If you're going to develop an app, get it out there, get it out to your customers you will need to have ongoing maintenance. You will need to have ongoing maintenance because when iOS 8 came out, all our apps stopped working because they completely changed the security model and their um, user interface layout model. We had to update and republish our apps to get them to work. Bear in mind, app will force updates on their users. So you'll get users who have updated to iOS 8.4 or iOS 9.3 now, and you'll get a phone call saying, my app doesn't work now. I, app will give you previews, so you do have time to, re, to rebuild the app, but this is just something you really need to think about in terms of ongoing maintenance, that you will have to keep, keep the budget and the, time, and the resources available to update the app. Google, you've almost got the opposite problem. We all know the stories of T-Mobile uh, in the UK not updating their Android devices for their customers. That means you've got users running very, very old versions of Android. And it depends. If you've got, Google will give you the analytics of how many devices of which, which version are running. It might only be 2%. But if your important customers are running that really old version, you have to be able to code the application to be back to be compatible. On Android, um, they do provide the libraries for that. It's an extra hoop to go through to make sure we've got that backward compatibility. So, in terms of operating systems and the environment, you've got two opposite problems with Apple and with Android. Um, that's it, really. So, an overview of how we use Xamarin and Microsoft, or how what Xamarin does in terms of the architecture, and some thoughts on testing, analytics, and distribution. So if you've got any questions before I hand it to me,